I was supposed to be getting home. My wife was getting ready for us to go out to dinner and maybe a movie or something like that. I remember seeing uh, tail lights of the car in front of me to the left and the car nosedive. He panic braked. He got on his brakes extremely hard um, and then I remember seeing him come into my lane extremely quickly, um, giving me not enough room to, to even really react. I remember hitting the ground. I don't remember much uh, after that for a while. And then I remember kind of coming to, um, I don't know how long it was with the driver that had contacted me here. He was in shock. He, he thought he had killed me. I needed my government phone and my personal um, so I can call my first sergeant and let him know what was going on. Um, and then also to call my wife and let her know that I was no longer going to be having date night at a restaurant where we were going to be doing it in the ER. He called me and I was like, that's weird. He already said he's on his way home. Like, you know, why is he calling me? So I had this like sinking feeling before I even answered my phone, like something was wrong. And then I answered and he said, um, don't freak out. I'm okay, but I was in an accident. And, you know, just seeing him laying there in the hospital bed and I was just, hugged him and said, are you sure you're okay? Because he's the kind of person that's like, oh, I'm all right, and just dusts himself off and no big deal, but I, I was a little worried still at that point. Right away I had headaches. I just thought it was from hitting my head on the ground. Um, and I was, I was having a harder time uh, communicating, holding conversations. Uh, after about, I would say anywhere from three weeks to about a month, um, I started having issues uh, because of the headaches and whatnot and not being able to communicate uh, dealing with other things. So my wife would ask me a question and I couldn't answer it quickly enough because uh, I had like what I call the spinning wheel of death in my head. So you click a mouse a million times and it just spins for you. That was that what was happening in my head. Your brain only has X amount of marbles to divvy up two tasks. And when your brain is dealing with pain and a lot of it, whether it's headaches and just all the broken bones I had and, and all that, it had divvied up all of its marbles and it could no longer um, mute or tone down the senses uh, so that you don't hear somebody chewing, so that you don't hear somebody breathing or you don't hear the hum of the lights and, and stuff like that. And because I wasn't able to do that, I wasn't able to tone them out, it would frustrate me and, and, and make me pretty upset like to where I would flip out on people like I felt like I was walking on eggshells and I would get ice by hand on an ice maker like I just tried to be quiet and not frustrate him but some days you see him struggling when he's trying to form a sentence so it, it's just natural to want to try and help someone when you see them struggling but that would just make him more upset because he again is stubborn and he wanted to figure it out on his own. I mean it was probably one of the hardest decisions I've, I've ever had to make um, because not only is there a stigma oh it's going to ruin your career and, and whatnot but I'm also I'm supposed to be the head of the household. I'm I'm the the macho, you know. I, I'm a I'm a type A personality, so I didn't want to be seen as as weak. So I, I think it kind of hit me from both sides. The people I talked to were were amazing, um, just for the simple fact that right away I could tell that they cared. Um, not only about me, but also about my, my career and my family. Uh, and they could tell that I had a genuine need to, to be there. Um, so, you know, they sprung right into action, started listening to what was going on, and they, they, they didn't do a referral to, 
neurology. They walked me to neurology. Doctors, yeah, neuropsychologists started asking me questions like um, what he was like before, what he's like now, you know, does he get angry, does he, does he yell, does he, you know, so we went over all that and that's when they knew like something has to be wrong if I'm seeing it, the kids would see it. So I mean obviously I talked to my mental health provider and, and stuff like that and um, how to know when it's becoming overwhelming and, and not, um, I guess, not falling off that edge or off that cliff. You have to know the cues, you have to know what's going on. Um, something as simple as, as being able to take yourself away from that situation and go, go think or, or write down in a journal uh, what is going on can, can help you relieve that, uh, that feeling of, of being overwhelmed. Yeah, I think this is the new normal. I don't think he's, they've tried so much for his pain and his headaches and I don't think he's going to be back 100% like he was before, but I'm okay with that now, you know, we've gotten past it, we have a very healthy marriage and I, I think things are going to be fine. He's a good guy. <laughs> don't lie. He's a good guy and he's a great dad and I love him. I don't think I could have, I don't think I would have recovered uh, as well as I have without having the network I have here at Travis. The, the people that are going through something, I, wa I want them to know that they can be strong by asking for help. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, I also want supervisors to understand and be able to pick out when somebody does need help. They need to have the, the strength or the power to, to ask the hard questions and to ensure that our airmen, our family that has U.S. Air Force over their left breast pocket is completely taken care of.